the concept of clanship in itself, the word clan comes from Gaelic and it is essentially children, is what it means. So that it is a family, it is basically a family. The head of our family is Cluny, our, fam our chief is always called Cluny. He always addresses his clansmen as cousins because he says we are all related, go back a long way and we are all related. Um, we have cousins now, many in Scotland, but all over the world, in America, Europe, Africa, Australia, everywhere in the world. Their sense of Scottishness is still very, very strong. And I think it is a family, a family feeling that they have. This is their homeland. This is where they like to come back to. They like to meet people of the same name, who share the same thoughts and ideals. Well, it's, it's, it's a very important part of my life, to, to, to be a member of, the, of my own clan and to, to, to share my life with my friends and my family. We, all, we call each other cousin. We may not be closely related, but we're, we're connected closely. And so it's a great pleasure for me to meet members of my, my clan all over the world. But I believe that they, they are regarded as important that the chief should, should, should represent them as the head of the clan, and if necessary, if, if, if there was to be a war between the clans, he, he would have to lead them. But I hope that's never going to happen. There was at one time uh, a parson, that was a priest, living in the Central Highlands. Um, he had sons. Uh, don't get me wrong, priests are not allowed to marry these days, but in those days they were. There was no questions. He had three sons, they formed three branches, and they were called the sons of the parson, the sons of the priest, the sons of the minister, and it developed into Mac Fersen. The, sons of, the prefix M-A-C in Scotland means the son of. Son of Donald is MacDonald, son of Dougal is MacDougal, the sons of the parson. The motto is, touch not the cat, bought a glove. Now, there are two versions of that. One is, it says, do not touch a wild cat unless you are wearing a glove. Our chief, our Cluny, subscribes to the version which says, do not touch the cat unless it is wearing a glove. When a cat is walking about, it pulls its claws back into its paw so that it doesn't blunt the points. But when it's about to spring on its prey, claws are out. When it's back in there, the cat is wearing a glove. So do not touch a wild cat unless it is wearing a glove. Good advice if you meet a wild cat. In our clan, the tradition has been by male descent. So when the, uh, the chief before my father died, he had three daughters. But they did not succeed because we do not go through the female line. So it came right, right back to 1740 and down through my family to my father, who was alive still in 1969. He, he, he knew, of course, for some time before that, but he was surprised in general terms because he thought that there would be a male to set descendants in the parallel part of the family. I've been at you now for 50 years. My father died in June 1969, and here we are in uh, 2019, 50 years later. So I celebrated 50 years as a chief this year. Well, we, we had, a, we had a, a, a very splendid party up, up in Newton Moor, and afterwards here to celebrate the, the event. My son, has been steeped in the tradition of the clan since he was born, and uh, he, 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 will, he will succeed me. I'm sure he'll be very good one day. Not quite, not, 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 not quite yet, I hope. This is our uh, famous green banner. Historically, the, uh, it was taken into battle uh, by the clan Macpherson, and when they carried it, then victory was always assured. 
its its origin goes back in antiquity, and quite honestly, I don't even know how long we've had a green banner. It is always goes in. It is the legend was that with the green banner, the Macphersons never lost a battle. They were involved in quite a lot of battles. Um, probably the most important was one in a place called Perth, which is an interesting battle. Uh, the King of Scotland, one of the many King Jameses, um, heard about these Highland clans making a nuisance of themselves. He said, "Light, I'll sort them. We'll, we'll make sure that they fight themselves to death. So he said, there will be a clan battle in Perth, 30 on each side, 30 from the Macphersons, 30 from their enemies, and they will fight it out. It was like a football match. They fought in a stadium, almost. They had stands, and the king and the queen and all the nobles sat and watched. It was wonderful for them. It was a very bloody affair. The Macphersons won, I'm glad to say. The biggest battle in Scotland, the last battle in Britain, in fact, was fought at a place called Culloden, which is just outside Inverness in 1746. The Macphersons should have been there, but they didn't. They, for various reasons, they arrived just too late, which is a good thing. Had they arrived in time, I might not have been here. This cairn represents the um, 50th anniversary of the Clan Association, but also the 250th anniversary of Battle of Culloden. And it, looking in the background, you can see this beautiful um, panoramic view, one of the best views in the Highlands, and certainly one of the best views in Bedenoch. In addition to the cairn, which represents the countries that, many of the countries that the Clan Macpherson have dispersed to since that period of time. There are stones from America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, England, Scotland, Wales. All the continents are represented. There are some dances which were made up for Macphersons. This is in the last 50 years or so. There is one called the Macphersons of Edinburgh Strathspey, which is a rather nice, graceful dance. Um, there is, I think, a Macphersons jig as well, but those are ones associated with the clan. For me, the clan and family are very different. Family is my mum, my dad, my two sisters, my nieces and nephews and my two children and my wife. You know, that's my family who have influence over my life. The clan as a whole has no influence whatsoever. That's heritage, that's, that's tradition, that's history. It's not something that is, is part of what I do day to day. Being part of the association, going up to the gathering, you know, walking onto the Highland Game field, you can't help feel a little bit of pride about being there and being a McPherson and walking on and feeling part of something. It's not the reason I go up there, you know. I go up there to spend with the immediate family and enjoy that weekend in that society, you know. It's not, um, it's, it's not something I aim to do to, to meet lots of other McPhersons and talk about McPherson things. I, th I think the majority of anyone who has that 
kind of immediate clan connection will certainly feel that heritage. But does it apply to modern life? Not massively, you know. People say, oh, what a Scottish name. And I go, well, yes, I'm Scottish, you know, so, you know, no different to meeting somebody from France called Pierre, I guess. I like Scottish music a lot, you know, but I like contemporary traditional Scottish music, if that makes sense. So, you know, pipe music, whistle music and all that kind of stuff. And that's mainly through, well, my dad in particular, who listened to folk music when I was younger and that got drilled into me and I still listen to that now. And as I've got older, I've found more modern contemporary stuff of that. Um, you know, I drink whiskey. I like whiskey. I like what goes around whiskey. Um, you know, the stereotypical things of haggis, you know, I like all that stuff, which is still pointing to my heritage, but there's plenty of Scottish people who don't like whiskey, who don't like haggis, who don't listen to Scottish music. Um, whether that's because they're connected to a clan or not, you know, I don't know. Scotland's iconic national dish. It is immortalised by our national poet, Robert Burns, who lived 250 years ago. He wrote a very famous poem about a haggis, which is recited every year on the occasion of his birthday, the 25th of January. There is a great gathering, what they call a Burns Supper, and all the people gather round about, and at a given point in the evening, the haggis is brought in, in a small procession. There will be a bagpiper at the beginning. There will be the chef, carrying the haggis like that, and there'll be various other people falling behind. They go round the table and they put it before the principal speaker. He then proceeds to address the haggis. And he says, Fair for your honest sonsy face, great chiefs of the pudding race, weel are you worthy of grace as long as me are. The groaning trencher there you fill, your hardy like a like a distant hill, and through your pores the dews distill like amber beet. His knife, see, honest peasant, and cut you up. <coughs> We're ready slecht, trenching your own entrails brecht like on a ditch. And then, oh, then, what a glorious secht, warm, reeking, wretch. Ye powers above, that make mankind your prayer, and send us doon our dim bill of fare. All Scotia wants nae skinkin' war that jokes in luggies, but if you want our grateful prayer, gie her a haggis! I wear it to weddings, I wear it to rugby matches, I wear it to formal black tie evening events. I probably wear it 10, 12 times a year. I, I, I don't wear it every week, but it's certainly more than, you know, just bring it out for the occasional wedding, you know. We take the red McPherson. The blue socks will go quite nicely with the tartan, the brown sporran, functional, neat. So for evening wear, your gentleman would have his evening kilt, a smart sporran, usually with a bit of silver, a skin do, which is in his sock, matching hose or socks. In the middle of the 18th century, there was a rebellion in Scotland. It's a 1745 rising, a Jacobite rising. It failed. The government decided that they would 
try and crush the Highlanders for good and all. This is where the rebels had come from. They were forbidden to speak their own language. They were not allowed their own customs and the men were not allowed to wear their national dress, the kilt. Had I been caught in the Highlands 250 years ago dressed as I am today, first offence, I'd have been in prison for some years. Second offence, I'd have been sent across the Atlantic to the West Indies to pick sugar. I probably would have died there of fever. Not a nice prospect. So the kilt very nearly went out of existence. Now this is Scotland's iconic garment. It's when you think of Scotland, you think of bagpipes, you think of mountains, and you think of a man in a kilt. It was not until the next century when it became popular again, mainly through the agency of Sir Walter Scott, a very famous Scottish author, and Queen Victoria, who had a home in the Highlands, Balmoral Castle, which is still owned by our present Queen today. When I start a kilt, I work closely with my customer. I will get the material that they're of their choice. So then when I've got the tartan, I will then just loosely pleat up the design so that the customer can see what the um, design on the back of the kilt will look like. So this is the, the end part of, of kilt making at the moment. Uh, at the moment, all the pleats are stitched to keep them in place and now I'm going to press them using steam and a vacuum. And this process will take a good 20 minutes to half an hour to really get the steam into the wool. And then the, the vacuum is taking the steam out of the wool and that's what sets the pleat in the kilt. And it's a great job to do on a cold day because it's warm. <laughs> During the First World War, uh, the Germans gave orders to their troops when, the, when, they were, when there was a British army approaching them. They said, shoot the officers first and then the pipers because the pipers were there to give inspiration and courage to the men. They were very, very important. It is still a very strong tradition in Scotland. There is one piece of music which is always associated with the Macphersons. It's called Macpherson's Rant. When we have our clan gathering once every year in August, the clan marches over a certain part, they come to a, a field, and as soon as they enter the field, the pipe band will play Macpherson's Rent. It's always a tradition, it is played then. Farewell ye dungeons, dark and strang, farewell, farewell to thee. Macpherson's time will ne'er be lying on yonder gal. I've always been interested in Scottish traditions as such, maybe more so than some people of my age in terms of music and dancing and food and all that kind of stuff. You know, I have well, one friend in particular who's also Macpherson, but we didn't become friends because of our name. We became friends because we met in a pub and we became friends and we have the same name. The majority of people are connected to a clan at some point in some way or another through, through their name. So whether I meet a Macpherson or a MacDonald or a McKinnon or Mackenzie, they all have that same thing and it's not a, we don't all live together in one house anymore, you know, so we or we're not fighting each other across fields and glens, so it's, 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 it's gone on from since then. The world's changing, the life's changing and, you know, you go to clan gatherings and a lot of the people are older and um, there's more young people that are coming through, I guess, to a point. Everything's becoming virtual. Will the gatherings still be here? at the same level in 20 years' time? Don't know. I see it's got a very rosy future. I see that uh, they will go from strength to strength, I'm quite sure. We have got a, a successful association. We've got a wonderful chief. Um, we have got uh, some very enthusiastic members. I think people are getting busier and they don't have as much time to do stuff that doesn't really excite them, you know, so you know, it depends what you want to prioritise your time, you know. So I'm in my mid, mid to late 30s. Um, you know, two young kids and a job, wife, house. 
I enjoy mountain biking, cycling, walking, all that kind of stuff. So to do all that and then have some sort of active involvement in a clan association, that's a lot to take on. Maybe when I'm 60, 65 and the kids have moved out and I'm not working as hard and, you know, there's more scope. Um, so I guess you hope that carries on and, and then there's some sort of thing. My grandchildren are very interested in the clan. They, they come to all the meetings and the uh, uh, rally in the summer and they wear the tartan and all the in, in, indications are that they'll carry on the traditions as they are now. I hope that the chief will, will, will always bear, wear the, 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 the tartan which, which I wear today and will carry on the traditions more or less as they are. There's question about you know, young, young people in their 20s, younger, what do they think now? Do they see themselves in 10 years' time being involved in it? I would question that. Farewell, ye dungeons, dark and strong. Farewell, farewell to thee. Macpherson's time will ne'er be long on yonder gallows tree. And say rantanly, and say wantonly, say rantanly gaily. He played a tune, and he danced it around, up low the gallows tree. It was by a woman's treacherous hand, that I was condemned to die. Up in my heat, at a windy she stood and the blanket she threw our me and say rant and lay and say want and lay say dance and lay gave me he played a tune and he danced it around up low the gallows tree the reprieve was coming on the brig of bam they set Macpherson free, but they bit the knock a quarter for, and they hang it empty the tree. And say round and lay, say want and lay, say round and lay, hey, hey. He played the tune and he danced it around, and blow the 